The Ledger by Robert Croach. The Ledger itself. The Ledger survived because it was neither human nor useful. A. In bookkeeping, the book of final entry, in which a record of debits, credits, and all money transactions is kept. The book of columns. Page 33, James Darling, 1880. March 22nd to Sawing Square Timber. One dollar, 44 cents. June 21st to One Round Cedar Bed. Three dollars, 50 cents. June 21st to One Jack Shingles. 50 cents. December 4th to Sawing Mabel. One dollar, 50 cents. November 4th. 1882. By logs, $4.10. It doesn't balance. Some pages torn out. By accident. Some pages remaining. By accident. Page 62. Nicholas Newbecker. 1893. November 16th. To Chopping Eight Bags. 40 cents. December 19th. To Chopping 880 Pounds. 49 cents. To Elm Scantling. 18 cents. The poet, by accident, finding in the torn ledger. It doesn't balance. The green poem. My grandfather Henry. Dead. In his watermill. Gone. On the Teeswater River. On the road between Formosa and Belmore, needing a new ledger. The ledger itself surviving purchased in the Bruce County Drug and Bookstore. Price one dollar paid. The leather cover brown in gold. The ledger. Everything I write, I said, is a search. Is debit. Is credit. Is a search. For some pages. Remaining. By accident. The poet finding in the torn ledger. The column straight. The column broken. Finding. Everything you write, my wife, my daughters, said, is a search for the dead. The book, the final entry, in which a record is kept. B. A horizontal piece of timber secured to the uprights, supporting the put logs in a scaffolding, or the like. The Canada Gazette, August 17, 1854. Notice is hereby given that the undermentioned lands in the county of Bruce, Upper Canada, will be opened for sale to actual settlers, the price to be 10 shillings per acre, actual occupation to be immediate and continuous. To raise a barn. Cut down a forest. To raise oats and hay. Burn the soil. To raise cattle and hogs. Kill the bear. Kill the mink. Kill the marten. Kill the lynx. Kill the fisher. Kill the beaver. Kill the moose. As to the climate of the district, Father Holzer cannot praise it enough. He declares that during the first nine months of his residence here, they only one funeral, and that was of a man 84 years old. A pristine forest. A pristine forest. That winter, therefore, timbers of elm and maple and pine were cut the necessary lengths, hewed and dressed and hauled by means of the oxen to the barn site. Cedar logs were sawn in suitable lengths and shingles split from these blocks. To the Saugeen was the cry that spread. Henry, the elder of the two brothers, was born in 1856 across the river from the mill in a log shanty measuring, as specified in the Canada Gazette, August 17, 1854, at least 16 feet by 18. Shaping the trees into logs. Burn the slash. Into timbers and planks. Shaping the trees into ledgers. Raising the barn. That they might sit down. To a pitcher of Formosa beer. A forest had fallen. Shaping the trees into shingles, into scantlings, into tables and chairs. Have a seat, John. Sit down, Henry. That they might sit down. A forest had fallen. Page 119. John O. Miller, brickmaker in Mildmay. 1888. August 17th. To Cedar Shingles. $12.50. August 17th. By brick 
$12.50. I'll be damned. It balances. Yes, no, no, yes. A specimen of the self-made men who have made Canada what it is, and of which no section has brought forth more or better representatives than the County of Bruce. Mr. Miller was never an office seeker, but devoted himself strictly and energetically to the pursuit of his private business, and on his death was the owner of a very large and valuable property. Shaping the trees, pushing out daisies. Have another glass, John. Yeah, yeah, what the hell. What's the matter, John? My bones ache. Take a day off, John. No time. A horizontal piece of timber supporting the put logs in a scaffolding or the like. Specimens of the self-made men who have made Canada what it is. The barn is still standing. The mill, however, the sound the day is gone. Raised. No time. August 17th, 1888. No time. Shaping the trees. Pushing up daisies. I'll be damned. It balances. C. One who is permanently or constantly in a place. A resident. Obsolete. Old Kotlieb Haig was a man verging on 80 years of age. As a young man, he had emigrated from Germany to America to seek his fortune and better his condition in the New World. Leaving Rotterdam in a sailing ship bound for New York, after a tedious and tempestuous voyage in which his ship was frequently blown halfway back to Europe, he finally landed on the shores of the New World. Here, all his fortune lay before him. Das ist doch nicht möglich. Arrivals, the sailing ship. Arrivals, the axe. Arrivals, the almighty dollar. Departures, the trout stream. Departures, the passenger pigeon. Departures, the pristine forest. Arrivals, the stump fence. Arrivals, the snake fence. Arrivals, the stone fence. Here, all his fortune lay before him. As a sample of the condition of many of the early settlers on their arrival, the Clement family, who came from Niagara Frontier, crossing rivers on rafts and swimming their cattle, possessed only two axes, a hoe, ox yoke, log chain, a drag made from the crotch of a tree, and an ox jumper in the way of agricultural implements. And as things went in those days, this was considered a first-rate stock. Though very few families in this county ever suffered any inconvenience or annoyances from the Aborigines, the Clements were rather roughly used by a wandering band on one occasion, who forcibly took possession of the whole roof of their shanty, which was composed chiefly of birch bark for the purpose of canoe making. Departures, the birch bark canoe. Ledger. A resident. Obsolete. Census, 1861, County of Bruce. 2,663 horses. 6,274 working oxen. 19,830 cattle of all ages. 29,412 sheep and swine. Turnips. 843,403 bushels. Wheat, 643,110 bushels. Maple sugar, 170,364 pounds. Cheese, 24,324 pounds. The enumerator got his feet frozen and another had to finish the work. Both made oath to their respective sheets and these are numbered and designated separately. Census, 1861, Township of Carrick. Indians, if any. None. Name, Catherine Schneider. Year of birth, 1841. Place of birth, Atlantic Ocean. Place of birth, Atlantis. The kingdom sought beyond the stone gates, beyond the old home, beyond the ceaseless wars of the Rhine Palatinate, the saw continent of fortune, 
lying beyond your father's recurring nightmare of the Forced. march to Moscow. My bones beyond ache. Beyond the flight from the burning fields, beyond the night of terror, crossing the closed border. Atlantis. The kingdom dreamed. Gottlieb Haig's only son grew up to be the first man hanged for murder in the county of Bruce. I can't believe my eyes. Having, on a wintry night, in a sleigh box on the road from Belmore to Formosa, clubbed to death his rival. I can't believe my eyes. In love. Departures. It is well watered by the south branch of the Saugeen and a number of tributaries, which afford fine mill privileges almost in every section. Departures. Henry, on quiet days at the mill, on wintry days, made furniture for sale to the thriving inhabitants who intended to stay. Page 95, Mr. Peter Brick, 1880, December 5th, to one bed, four dollars, to six chairs, four dollars fifty cents, to two chairs, one dollar, to one sink, four dollars, to one dressing case, sixteen dollars, to one sideboard, ten dollars, to one table, four dollars, forty-three dollars, Fifty cents. 1881. Settled by one horse. Forty-three dollars, fifty cents. Mr. Peter Brick, on the road from Belmore to Formosa, intending to stay. Beer also was plentiful and cheap. Bought new furniture for his new brick house and turned the old log shanty into a summer kitchen where, on hot afternoons, he might wait out the heat. Ledger. A resident. Pushing up daisies. Obsolete. D. The Nether Millstone. They were draining the pond to do some work on the dam. Seeing a few fish at the floodgate, Henry sent one of his sons for a bucket. The boy, stepping into the water, catching fish with his bare hands, filled the bucket. Henry could hardly believe his eyes. But he sent the boy for a sack and couldn't believe. But he sent the boy for a tub, for a barrel. Joe Hoke got his arm caught in the water wheel. He screamed, but no one heard him. He couldn't get free. The wheel was trying to lift him up to heaven. He couldn't get free. Joe Hoke had a good head on his shoulders, a cap on his head. He threw his cap into the racing water. The men unloading logs below the mill noticed the cap. They ran on up to the mill site. The doctor had good horses. He got there that same day. Three men held Joe Houck flat on a table right next to a saw. While the doctor patched and sewed, ran out of thread, broke a needle. To chopping eight bags, 40 cents. You must see the confusion again. The chaos, again, the original forest. Under the turning wheel, the ripened wheat, the raised forest, the run man, the nether stone. Page 117, Paul Willie, 1893. By one half day work, 38 cents. By work with team, two dollars. By 100 pounds of flour, one dollar eighty-five cents. By twenty-five bushels lime. Three dollars twelve cents. By plowing potato patch. One dollar fifty cents. By working at dam. Two dollars. Team to mild main. Fifty cents. By five cord of wood. Eight dollars. By beef eighty-seven pounds at five cents. Four dollars thirty-five cents. By hay one thousand pounds. Four dollars. By two hemlock logs. Seventy-five cents. By one twenty-foot cedar log. Fifty cents. By three sixteen-foot cedar. Seventy-five cents. It doesn't balance. 1854 to 1910. To sawing butternut. To sawing... Pine. To sawing... Basswood. To sawing... Birch. To sawing... Soft elm. To sawing... Rock elm. To sawing cedar, to sawing tamarack, to sawing maple, to sawing beech, to sawing black ash, to sawing hemlock, to sawing cherry. It doesn't balance. The bottom of the pond 
was not so much mud as fish. The receding water was a wide fountain of leaping fish. Henry sent a daughter to go fetch Charlie Reinhardt, Ignatz Kiefer, James Darling, Peter Brick. The neighbors began to arrive, and strangers bearing empty sacks, from up the road to Formosa, from down the road to Belmore. The neighbors came with tubs and barrels, with a wagon box, and they clubbed at the eels that skated on the bright mud. They lunged at the leaping trout. They pounced like bullfrogs after bullfrogs, and they swam in the quick receding flood. The grinding stone that does not turn. Under the turning stone, the nether stone, the ledger. Intending to stay. The children screamed after their leaping, swimming parents. They didn't believe their eyes. They bathed in the clean, the original mud. They flung the fish onto dry land and themselves stayed in the water. They usurped the fish. The floodgate was open, the dam no longer a dam. They rose, blue-eyed and shouting, out of the tripping, slippery mud. While the fish, their quick gills strange to the sudden air, drowned for the lack of water. The children, sitting hunched on the dam, hearing Joe Houck scream, were silent. In all their lives, they had never heard Joe Houck scream, his arm mangled by the turning wheel. People said Joe Houck was never the same after that water wheel tried lifting him up to heaven. No matter what he did, people shook their heads. He's not the same, they said. When his brothers went west to Homestead, Joe elected to stay at the mill. He wasn't the same. E. A large flat stone, especially one laid over a tomb. Dear Bob, in regards to information about my grandmother, your great-grandmother, Theresia Shearheart, she was a sedate, tall, heavy-set person, well-read and could visit with the best. She did love reading and mixing with people. She was widowed three times before going west. She passed away after trying to sit on a chair and missing it, broke her hip and was in bed for a few weeks, died and was buried in Spring Lake, Alberta. She was still very active before her fall. All my love, Aunt Mary. Born in Alsace, she spoke German with a French accent, English with a German accent, looked down on all Bavarians for being the tree-chopping beer drinkers they all were. Married three Bavarians, buried three Bavarians. It balances. What did most men feel in her presence? Terror. What did they do about it? Proposed. I can't believe my eyes. An A1 cook kept a spotless house. She wasn't just careful, she was tight. Went to church more often than was necessary. Men felt terror. They proposed. Census 1861, County of Bruce. Deaths in 1860 age and cause. One year, croup, blank, born dead, five months, fits, blank, dysentery. Sixteen years, hurt by sawmill wheel. Thirty-eight, one death, inflammation. Henry's father, dead. The doctor had good horses. Page 88, John Mossack. In accounts, Theresia Crutch Mesner Hauk. January 19th to White Ash. $12.05. Paid in full. August 24 to Black Ash. $2.84. Paid in full. November 10th to Pine. 216 feet. $2.16. Paid in full. Owing that woman money. Was a mistake. What do I owe you? Seventeen dollars and five cents. What do you settle for? Seventeen dollars and five cents. You must marry the terror. Finally succumbed to the grave herself. Spring Lake, Alberta, nineteen thirteen. Ruhe in Frieden. The Canadian climate 
a short summer, followed by a long winter, followed by a short summer, followed by a long winter. She was a ring-tailed snorter just the same. You must marry the terror. 1913, subtract 1829, 84. Cause of death, went to sit down and miss the chair. She lies buried to the east of the church in Spring Lake, Alberta. She was visiting in Heisler, Alberta at the time of her death. Heisler was so new, it didn't have a graveyard. Death prohibited on these premises. Verdammt. What do I owe you? Oh, bury me not on the lone prairie. What do I owe you? What do I owe you? Where the coyotes howl and, and the, the wind blows free. Even by God dead, washed, dressed, laid out, she indicated. She was a ring-tailed snorter just the same. Her desire to be interred in the plot of Ontario earth next to the ledger that covered her first husband. Zum Andenken von Lorenz Kretsch, gestorben den 13. Februar 1860, alt 38 Jahre. Ruhe nun im samten Schlummer in der Erde kühlem Schoss. Hier entwichen allen Kummer ist der Friede nun dein Los. Noch umringen wir dein Grab Schauen wehmutsvoll hinab, doch zur Ruhe gehen auch wir, Gott sei Dank, wir folgen dir. Inflammation of the lungs. Coughed, gagged, choked, died. Requiescat in bad chain. No one would pay the shot. The CPR wouldn't do it for love. An Alberta grave. Cold, cold grave. F. A book that lies permanently in some place. A man that lies permanently in some place. A woman that lies permanently in some place. A resident. Obsolete. The book of final entry. The book of columns. The book that lies permanently. The timber supporting the put logs in a scaffolding. For example, the poem. In the chaos, in the dark night, in the beautiful forest. With no effort or pretension to literary merit, the object will be rather to present a plain statement of facts of general interest, which bear upon the past growth and development of this wonderfully prosperous section of the province, in such manner as to render future comparisons more easy and to offer to the rising generation an incentive to emulation in the examples of the pioneers whose self-reliant industry and progressive enterprise have conquered the primeval forests and left in their stead as a heritage to posterity a country teeming with substantial comforts and material wealth and reflecting in its every feature the indomitable spirit and true manliness of a noble race whose lives and deeds will shine while the communities they have founded shall continue to exist. Gottlieb Haig's only son for the first murder in the county of Bruce, hanged. With no effort or pretension to literary merit. Kalt Schuch usually mowed down three or four spellers. When it didn't, such words as gubernatorial or physici or threnody would do the trick. Henry, how do you spell maple? M-A-B-L-E. Henry, how do you spell balance? B-A-L-L-O-N-S. Henry, how do you spell Henry? Capital H-E-N-E-R-Y. Threnody, a song of lamentation. The ledger itself survives. Page 69, Edward McGew. Intending to stay. 1886. To Hemlock Rafters. Five dollars, one cent. To Cedar Shakes. Eighteen dollars, seventy-five cents. The roof over his head. 1887. To Hemlock Fencing. Five dollars, ten cents. 
to one plow. Nine dollars fifteen cents. The sod beneath his boots. The ledger stone, the nether stone. Either would do the lasting trick. The stone singing song on the stone. The ledger itself. Robert Nickel, John Malloy, Jacob surviving. Sagmiller. Paid in full. Beyond the last. Luke film. Stiegler. Beyond Pat the last Mahoney. George Strauss. Paid in field. full. The Fleming Ballow, Michelle gone, Kirby, from the last Robert Curl, worn, paid in full, and gone. John Elder, beyond the last Michael Laporte, beyond the Richard last McDaniel, paid in full, entry. Christian Kirschmer, Henry Busby, William Trench, paid in full, Joseph Hall, Peter Shoemaker, David Rush, paid in full. They had to cut down three trees in order to bury the first man dead in Formosa. Some people go to heaven. Some people write poems. Some people go west to homestead. Cut to the rock. The rock rose up. Tombstones are hard to kill. Rest, Rest in, in peace. peace. You must marry the terror. <laughs>